welcome. In the last lecture, we have defined the Fourier coefficient. Let us recall that this is a map we are considering to C uh, complex function and then we define denote the Fourier coefficient as the capital F which is 1 over n summation over n equal to 0 to um, n minus 1 f of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k by k n by n. Okay. So, then easily one can see that some basic properties if if f and g are fourier coefficient of functions f and g respectively then Uh, f plus g is the Fourier coefficient of f plus g. That is uh, just the linearity of the sum is going to uh, give us uh, this much sub because suppose h of k the Fourier coefficient of f plus g this is 1 by n n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f plus g of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n then this is if you split the sum you are going to get f of k plus g of k. Okay. So, in general if f j from z n to c and j is equal to 1 to some m, then the Fourier coefficient of summation over j from 1 to m f j is given by summation over j from 1 to m f j. That means, individual Fourier coefficients they get added. Then the second one is that let g of n this is equal to f of capital N minus of n, where f is a function from z n to c and I define then g becomes a function also from z n to c. Uh, so therefore, the Fourier coefficient of this is if you do it g k, the Fourier coefficient of g then this is going to be 1 by n. g of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n which is equal to 1 by n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus 1 f of n minus of n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. Now, of course, so if I make a change of variable that capital of n minus of n is equal to L, then this L is going to vary from 0 to n minus 1 again, right? And so, therefore, this is we can get n L equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f of L e to the power minus 2 pi i k and this n is replaced by this n is uh, uh, replaced by l uh, 
n minus of l by n because I am taking n minus of n this is equal to l. So, therefore, this is 1 by n summation over l equal to 0 to n minus 1 f of l e to the power 2 pi i k l by n because again by the 2 um, uh, by periodicity of this. So, this is equal to f the Fourier transform at minus k. So, remember that minus k in my notation is the inverse of the k in z n that is the n minus k. So, that is what is uh, um, one can see and then the second is. So, if we take third you take g n to be equal to f n bar. Then of course, what you can get this g k then you can take the bar outside the sum. So, e to the power. So, this is summation n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f n bar e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. Now, if I take the bar whole outside n minus of 1, then this is f n e to the power 2 pi i k n by n and this. So, again this is equal to 1 f minus of k bar. So, now one of the thing what we observe in the Fourier transform uh, in the Fourier series case is that if I translate then I take the Fourier transform then it was heated by a character. So, similar kind of thing is going to be true over here. Now, you define g of n is equal to f of n minus of n naught for some fixed n naught. Then if you compute just like that you you are going to get g of k this is equal to uh, heat, heated by the character it is e to the power 2 pi i k n naught by n into f of k because you can pull out the k times n naught by n that will be independent of n in the sum variable so we can get that so and the converse is also true. Now, if you take g of n, you hit that with a character 2 pi i k uh, 2 pi i n naught by n uh, g of n is n n naught by n uh, and f of n then g of k this you are going to get that this is f of k minus n naught. Just you take the sum inside then what you are going to get is this. Okay. So, now another important uh, uh, property what we have exploited uh, in the Fourier series case uh, that is uh, the convolution. So, now we can define the convolution let f g is from j n to c define f convolution of g at n this is equal to 1 by n summation over j is equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f of n minus j g of j. As you can see that uh, I can define actually f for any integer because every integer is going to have a representative with respect to capital N uh, in among the number um, 
0 to n minus 1. As a matter of fact, they are equivalence class I can define. Each of them, suppose 0 is going to be the same as n, 2 n, 3 n, 4 n, 5 n, 6 n, minus n like this. 1 would be n plus 1, right? And then you, you are going to 2 n plus 1, 3 n plus 1 like this. Uh, so, therefore, there is absolutely no ambiguity in defining f of n minus of j. So, uh, now, so there what we have seen when we did the convolution, there we found that actually that does not exist any g such that f convolution of g is equal to f for all f because uh, 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 if I take the, the argument there was if I take the Fourier transform then what we get that g hat of n is equal to 1 and which contradicts the Riemann Lebesgue lemma. Let us see whether we have something here similar or we have something better. So, define g of n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 0, 0 otherwise. That is again delta 0. Then now f convolution of delta 0 at n, this is going to be 1 by n summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 f of j delta 0 of n minus of j. As you can see here, because uh, this is an abelian group, so I can uh, this I can take that this is also equal to n summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 f of j g of n minus of j. So, there is uh, nothing to just the change of variable is going to give me this and uh, and if this you can also f convolution g is equal to g convolution of f. So, now here let us look at this. Now, this sum this this one is going to survive only when this n is equal to j. I mean rather j is equal to n because n is fixed uh, here we have j equal to 0 to n minus of 1. So, whenever j is equal to n then it is going to survive rest of the for the rest of the j this will be 0 this delta 0 would be 0. So, only term which gets survived is uh, f of uh, n. So, now if I do a little bit of this, if I define my g to be n times delta 0 of n, then uh, th that is g is taking the value n when n is equal to 0 and taking the value 0 when n is not equal to 0, then in that case what I get is for this g at n, this is going to be 1, uh, sorry, this is going to be f because n is going to get heated because this value is going to take the value capital N. Therefore, what we are. So, here in contrast with the Fourier series, here what we have found is that it has an identity. Okay. So, now the next one of the most important properties of the convolution uh, we have used is the Fourier transform. Convolution we have seen uh, as a product 
on um, the domain side and uh, with the function side then uh, when I take the Fourier transform it is going to take f hat to f hat because it is uh, point wise multiplication in uh, uh, Fourier similar kind of thing let h be the Fourier transform of f convolution of g. So, let me write down then this h k this is equal to 1 by n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f convolution of g at n e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. Now, I open up f convolution g this is equal to 1 by n square is going to come out which is equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f of j g of n minus of j e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n. Now, first I will do the n sum. So, this is j equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f of j then 1 by n summation over j is equal to 0 to n uh, n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 g of n minus j e to the power minus 2 pi i k n by n naught. Now, I make a change of variable n minus j. So, now here I am going to get an extra factor. So, this is going to get 1 by n summation over j from 0 to n minus 1 f of j e to the power minus 2 pi i k j by n into this is g of uh, k. So, now the first quantity is nothing but f of k and g of k. So, exactly it follows that uh, the Fourier transform of f convolution g is going to be the Fourier transform of f times the Fourier transform of g. Okay. So, now and then what we must try to get? So, the one of the most important thing there was that the inversion and the Plancero. So, now let us see that whether we are going to get this over here or not. Now, you take consider v to be the set of all functions now of course, uh, v is going to be a vector space because if I take two functions then uh, some point wise sum f plus g n is equal to f n plus g n this is again a function and if I hit that with a scalar then that is again going to give us a function. So, v is a vector space. Now, if it is a vector space, then it is going, it must have basis element. So, what are the basis elements of this? Uh, um, so, now define E 0 of n, this E or rather E i of n. this is equal to 1 if n equal to i and 0 otherwise and this is for the function i from 0 i varies over this. For each i from 0 to n minus 1 I define this function. So, there are n types of n of this function. Now, these e i's 
linearly independent as if you take i from 1 0 to n minus of 1 a i e i this is equal to 0 that means this is true for every n for all n belongs to z n then here only n it is going to survive is that i is equal to n therefore alpha n is equal to 0 for all n the a, a n is equal to 0 for all n therefore they are linearly independent and now one can see that if you take a function let f is from z n to c and f of n is equal to alpha n then this f can be written as f of n this is equal to summation over j from 0 to n minus of 1 alpha j e uh, j of n. So, that uh, basically says that this spans the whole thing. Therefore, the dimension of v is equal to n. Okay. So, now once we have a vector space, then it is natural for us to define the inner product in that vector space. Let f and g this belongs to this vector space then define the inner product f g this is equal to 1 by n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 f of n g of n bar and uh, as usual I will denote square this is equal to f comma f which is equal to 1 by n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 mod f n square. This is the so called norm. So, now what we need to find is uh, that whether we have uh, uh, the inversion as and Percival identity in this setting. Uh, recall one thing that in the Fourier series case, we have exploited uh, that e to the power i n theta, they are going the, the their orthogonal family. And, uh, with a scalar multiplication they become orthonormal and that we have exploited heavily while doing the Fourier series. So, now let us see that the similar thing is going to be true here or not. So, let me write it as a lemma the family E 0 to e n minus of 1 is an orthogonal family. Uh, the proof is uh, trivial. Uh, what do I mean by the orthogonal family? Let me uh, define it. That means, e m uh, e j this is equal to 0 if m not equal to j. Moreover, E m E m this is equal to 1 by n. Now, let us do the proof. Proof is simple just writing down the definition E m E j this is equal to 1 by n summation over n equal to uh, 0 to n minus of 1 and uh, so this is actually this is going to be equal to 1. So, this is E m of n E 
j of n. So, this is equal to 1 by n and if as you can see that you are doing the pointwise evaluation of n is not equal to m this is equal to 0 and uh, if j so only surviving term is going to occur is that provided it is going to be equal to 1 pro if m equal to j if m is not equal to and this is equal to 0 if m is not equal to j uh, because if m is wherever e m is going to take the value 1 e j is going to take the value 0 because m and j they are not equal therefore you are going to get that this is uh, but this this is an orthogonal family but this is on the function side which is actually not going to give uh, any kind of result uh, in the Fourier analysis because we want to look at the orthogonal family in terms of uh, on the Fourier side that means there we are looking at e to the power 2 pi i n theta. So, similarly define phi of n or phi uh, k of n this is equal to uh, e to the power 2 pi i k n by n. Now, whether this is an orthogonal, this is a function and which is orthogonal in, uh, so obviously all this uh, phi k, this belongs to v. Now, if I take phi k and phi j, this is equal to by definition 1 by n summation over uh, n equal to 0 to n minus 1 phi k n and phi j n bar which is equal to 1 by n summation k n by n into e to the power minus 2 pi i j n by n. This is equal to 1 by n summation over n equal to 0 to n minus of 1 e to the power 2 pi i k minus j of n by n. Now, if k is not equal to k is not equal to j, then these are all the nth uh, root of unity. So, therefore, this if is equal to 0 if k is not equal to j. So, now this is an orthogonal family this is and this is what we are going to exploit to get results in this setting. Thank you.